of water. Help yourself, it's free. It's complimentary water. Well, Sanctuary is a show that has a lot of citations next to it. It's one of the most successful internet series of all time, having made the leap to a hit televised series about to enter its third season. It is one of the first television shows to be filmed entirely on the advanced Red One camera. It was last year nominated for an Emmy for visual effects and has been nominated for more than 50 other awards during its two years on the air. How about a round for that? According to my um, Con Not to Screw Up Comic Con panel document, it says, get your showrunners involved early. They're the gatekeepers to secrets that the fans really want to hear about. <laughs> so let's, let's start with you then, Dan. First of all, to what do you attribute all of the success that Sanctuary's had? Why do you think it's done so well? His cast. <laughs> His wonderful cast. God, Damien, it's so weird. It was like your mouth wasn't moving. Yes. <laughs> The writing part. There was writing. Well, let's let's you know spill it. What are we going to see in season three? Uh, season three uh, is such a, an amazing adventure. It's our first time having twenty episodes, which is beautiful and daunting all at the same time. But it allows us to finally tell these amazing, long, beautiful arcs. For the record, beautiful, daunting. <laughs> What's the name of our band? Beautiful, daunting artists. Um, and so we get to tell some stories that we just wouldn't essentially have the leeway to tell. And so season three is a very, very um, involved, historical uh, season. It's very important. <laughs> I have to go back and think about all that we've done because we're so far out in front of it. But I think you're all going to love it. I love it. This is my favorite season of the show so far. And I know I said that last year when I said that about season two. But season three is amazing. We, we tell stories that I just am so thrilled to tell. And the characters get deeper, and we learn about their history, and the villains are cool, and the places we go are new and unexpected, and it's just a thrill. It's just this candy store that just, you know, built the second, third, and fourth floor. So we're thrilled to show it to you. The show, I mean, I, I'm constantly amazed. I, I'm going to pay you a compliment day. Mark the day, uh -huh. one per year. But, like, I, I'm constantly amazed at the scope. Every year, this show gets bigger and deeper and, and, and the scope gets wider and, and I think season three is just, you know, it has raised the bar uh, in that way too. And it's, just, it's just amazing to see the places we're going, the things we're doing, and uh, yeah, as seen for that trailer, it's going to be crazy. I, I definitely wish I could just start a ream of spoilers. Because it just we go, oh, you, and then I can start acting it out a bit, you know? There's only a couple of people here, it'd probably be fun. Yeah. You guys want to know? Uh, no Twitter. We're very excited about that. There, there's some amazing stories being told, and the, the, the cast are, are doing beautiful, amazing, deep, funny, very human things with these stories, and it's just, it's just going to be the good season yet. And, right? and not so human. And not so human. So in the in the second season, from the beginning, but I actually really noticed it in I think the third or fourth episode, which was Hero. I noticed that there was this kind of quantum leap in the look of the show. It just looked a lot better in the second season. Is, is there going to be a, a continued evolution the way the show looks in the third season? And, and what's behind that? What's going on over at Anthem that, that has caused the show to kind of you know well, look you cooler know, and cooler? When you have a company like Anthem that is so gung ho and cowboy. It's not just a job. I mean, Sanctuary sort of attracts this very passionate group of people who love to do this sort of thing. And the, you know, the economics and the politics and the, the business of it kind of takes somewhat of a back seat yeah. because everybody's just loving the work. And it gets nauseatingly beautiful all the time because we're just <laughs> loving our job. And, uh, we don't and, have the budget of uh, some of the comparable shows on the network. We don't have quite their budget, and the fact that our crew and, and our cast are all working for less than they were worth, um, especially our crew. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you look at me <laughs> when you made that comment? Why? I would like to know. I'm talking to our job, you know, I'm talking about oh, okay. um, No, but I, I, everyone, did, like, they need to do some passion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, about working on the show, like, it, it's infectious. 
We, we feel that creatively, I believe, the show has to continually be like a creative shock. It can't stop. It has to continually move forward to value things. And so the show must always expand. Right. It just has to. Otherwise, we're kind of just recycling stories. And, oh, there's that villain again. Because we know that villain. But is part of that technological? I mean, have you learned stuff from season one in terms of the way the show is made and shot? Obviously, it's a very complicated way in which the show is put together. And has there been an evolution in terms of the technology, though? Absolutely. I mean, Amanda can speak to that. She directed and she's involved in a lot of the post production decisions. We're constantly trying to find ways to expand and refine and learn from the way we did it. And invent new tricks all the time. Are going to be yeah. saying that? Absolutely. And there's a certain comfort level with the technology now that allows us to push the envelope that we, we weren't able to do necessarily in season one of shooting with the red. We learned a lot. Season two, we learned even more. And now we feel really comfortable visually pushing the envelope because we understand the technology so much better. It also helps for us, I think, as a cast to have an idea of what, a more clear idea of what the world is looking like and what's happening to yeah. be able to escape into that world more. And let's face it, for us to get better all the time, I mean, we just, we owe that to you guys. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know, we gotta keep the bar is set so high from the get-go. Ryan, to kind of pick up on what you just said, I think that, that's another question that I had, which is that I think one of the things that I've heard a lot about the way that the show is made is how liberating it is, right? You can go anywhere, you can build anything, you can do anything. What I haven't really heard, um, and I'm interested if, if this exists, is whether or not there's another side to that. Um, what is it about this process that makes it hard? I mean, I know you said one of the things that's helped make the show better is that now you can kind of feel the world that you're in and you can see it. As an actor, is this, is this process pain in the ass sometimes? I mean, is it, is it always liberating or is it also difficult? No, I think for me, I have no I have no right imagination to this, so I, I, have, you know, I just you know, I see crazy things in my head all the time, so it's fine. You know. <laughs> um, the only thing is, like, you know, when we go to Mumbai and we go to Paris, or, it, it would be nice to actually go there. <laughs> Other than that, I mean... But you don't feel as actors across the board that, that this is in any way... Amanda uses the uh, analogy of it's, sometimes it's like like doing theater. Yeah. Right? You're, you're on the stage, you're on the green stage, and, and a lot of uh, what's going on is going on in your imagination. Um, but yes, and I think we've all gotten used to that. And also, it is kind of cool then you know, to re-experience the show when you see the finished product and you go, oh yeah, that's, that's what I was running away from. Yeah. That's the coolest part, is you, it doesn't matter what you imagine it is going to look like, it's so much more epic than you ever had in your mind. But for us, the great thing about our show is it's such a visually spectacular show, yeah. but it's also very character driven, so that's what makes it, I think, easier for us as actors, is because yeah. it's a character driven show, we have these great relationships that have really developed over the last few seasons, and this, in season three, I think even our personal relationships, uh, Presented in the characters some more, and yeah. there's just a definite there's a, a comfort and a, there's really an a lot on this year. I think there's an intimacy to the process because it is just that it becomes about the words and the actors and the connection with the characters. It's not so much about all the scenery around you because you can't see it, so you kind of close it down and make it very intimate. And there's an unbelievable shorthand that's, that's I think it's been there since the beginning. But Did you just call me short? <laughs> yes. Yes. I got that. Also say you're unbelievable. <laughs> and not in a good way. I think the way they start off, but I mean, there, there's a short. Sorry, there's a. There's a <laughs> how can I rephrase it? There's a, there's a way of communicating that doesn't take very long. Uh, that will, <laughs> that will, yeah, now I said wrong. Oh God, it's gone, it's gone down here. Uh, but I think you know, and, and that's just like we have such a, a tight knit group of people, the crew, the cast, everybody. And, um, you know, there can be things where, you know, Marty Wood would be, you know, call cut and, and, and he'll walk over to me to say something and I'll just already go, yeah, no, I got it, let's go. And I think that's, that's you know, what Amanda was saying about the, the tightness. I, I think, to be honest, the fact that we are this kind of grassroots independent uh, production, <laughs> see what I wrote, this is the short one, right here. Um, it's easy to, to have all the bells and whistles and cranes and helicopters and giant, you know, uh, places to go shoot. You can get wrapped up in that and the story can get lost. And you can, it's, it's, we have to be very clever in everything we do has to service the story and the characters. And the show itself just works because we only want to tell stories about our characters. I mean, I don't like stories where it's like a mysterious person comes to the sanctuary, and then 
I like it when Helen Magnus or Henry Foss or um, Will, what's his name, have to. Uh, <laughs> that's Mr. Will, what's his name? <laughs> well, let's talk about the characters. Um, Amanda, according to my, I'm not to screw up the panel, it says, um, it actually says this. It says, don't hide the booze. Talent are a lot funnier with a few drinks in there. She seems a lot more, I don't know whether, I mean, she seems more sensual, right, than, than Sam Carter. No, I mean, that, I mean, she really does, right? She seems a much, like, like a much more sensual character than, than maybe Sam Carter from Stargate. And yet, I'm always amazed when I watch the show how little we kind of see her. I know. When, I guess what I'm asking is, when, Wait, when is Magnus going to get it on with somebody? When is that going to happen? But when is she gonna yes. let loose a little bit? She has a boyfriend. He's just like the baddest boyfriend you could ever have. <laughs> I have a boyfriend. He's just not very nice to women. Um, yeah, I agree. In fact, I, I brought up that question before to Damien. Um, when? <laughs> I don't think it just turns out. It just seems like uh, under right on the surface we get the sense that she she's very comfortable with her sexuality. Unlike yeah. Sam, who is very awkward with her sexuality, uh, Helen it is not, <laughs> <laughs> and has had many, you know, wonderful experiences over the course of her years. So she's very comfortable with her body and with herself, which is something I'm getting used to. The idea, of, especially the heels. Um, I was going to say, yeah, we've all seen Magnus's shoes. <laughs> Josh, she's choosy. She's choosy. Okay. Yeah. Could you go back but can we maybe look forward? Can we maybe look forward though? Could there be some choosing? Can we look forward in the season ahead to some romantic entanglements for Dr. Magnus? Yes. Can I announce something? Yeah. 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 Uh, you're asking, are you sure? Yes, you can announce something. We're really very excited, and not that I want to tie the romantic thing together with this, but who knows? It could go somewhere. Uh, we have a wonderful guest star coming up for uh, a couple of episodes. She sort of goes toe to toe with Magnus. And it's the incredible Polly Walker who will be playing this character from Africa and Rome, and she's gorgeous. And I, I read the scenes between them, and I was like, "It's really you know, why not?" Wow. Clothes are coming off. Just add tweets. Just get yeah, here. Yeah.